Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this month's theme, we're doing something called Sims. That's what the executive consultant is calling it. But he means by that stupid people, idiotic fools. And I said to myself, what movie can I pick where the entire cast is full of idiots? And I found it. It's Clifford the Movie, 1994. Let's start the show. Hi, what's your name, son? My name is Clifford. And I think you're the bestest captain in the whole wide world. Well, thank Martin Short in his smallest role ever. Charles Grodin in his most trying performance. I underestimated the evil one. What is it with you and Dinosaur World? It's a sick thing! And Mary Speedvirgin. <laughs> Clifford, terror has a new name and comedy <laughs> has a new face. All right, so tonight we're doing Clifford the Movie, 1994. Uh, Star Study cast. Uh, very good movie, in my opinion, for what it's supposed to be about. Uh, I'll introduce the movie in a second, but let me bring in some of my co-hosts so that they can join me in on this fun. Hopefully, they enjoy this movie as much as I did. I'm going to switch things up. I'm going to bring in the person who I want to thank for going to Universal Studios and not inviting me. Also, Mike Knox, who I put on punishment for going there in my stay. It's the executive consultant. Sir, how are you doing? I, I'll be doing a lot better if somebody remembers that this was Daddy Daughter Day, and last I checked, he, he didn't have any I, kids. I, I could have brought a kid. There are a lot of kids who want to go to Universal Studios, and because of people, they can't go. He could have brought a kid. Right. Next up, we're going to have a man who picks a lot of bad movies, but he loves them all. Let's see what he thinks about this one. Vic, how are you doing, sir? Well, you already said it. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing else that needs to be said. Vic with the two piece. We now, Vic, uh, we know that you're feeling under the weather, so maybe that's why you might think this movie is bad. But really, I think you actually mean it's very good. Oh, uh, listen, man, it was a good time. You ever yeah. seen Problem Child? I, I was thinking that when I was watching. <laughs> Yo, this movie's great. <laughs> oh man, this you know, but you know what the funniest thing about it is is that. This guy's playing the kid, and yeah. clearly he's like at least 30. At least. <laughs> at, least. <laughs> at least 30 in this movie. So, like, and everybody's treating him like a little kid. So, like, literally, the way you just opened this show was perfect because everybody is a fool. Yes. <laughs> in this movie. But the one thing I do like is that um, this is hardcore simping for real. Because, like, when you got to tell that many lies, like, damn, like, come on, man. Be honest with yourself. Listen, I won the, I, I, you know, I'm biased, but I think I won last month's trophy for theme. And I'm trying to win this month's trophy for theme. Yeah, well, you're getting is close. It, is it a two for? No. I don't know. You might have it because, wow, this might, this is, this, this is a hit. I'll tell you that much. I don't know. Let me, let me introduce this movie for those who haven't seen it. Shout out to the 100 people watching us live. We appreciate you for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here it is. Clifford, a precocious 10 year old adamant on getting to dinosaur land in LA, actively sabotages his way through anybody he deems responsible for keeping him from his favorite place in the world. As I said, the aforementioned Dinosaur Lamb, starring Martin Short, who's behind me right there, looking ever so lovingly as any child might in a schoolboy uniform from the 1930s. I don't know what he's wearing uh, in his boarding school uniform. I'm going to pass it on to somebody who wants to go first, though. I'm very curious what you all thought of it. Now, Chris, we know that you love children, so I'm going to let you go second. But Vic, you started to tee it off. I want you to go ahead and take it, get it, get it in the two parts. Oh, my bad. You know what? I started rambling. Because clearly, no, clearly, no. clearly, I had a good time. You know what I mean? I'm not going to lie. You I know, was curious if you were going to like this movie. I mean, no, because right away, it reminded me of Problem Child. Just, mm -hmm. it, it just, And here's the shit. Like, every single time he made that face, like, he crossed <laughs> his eyes, I was just, like, hyped for it. Like, oh, snap, what's coming now, boy? You know what I mean? Like, it, it was... um. Yeah, for that part of it, it was just a good time because this kid really, you could not tell him no. 
Um, Who do you think would have been worse, Problem Child, or 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 uh, Clifford? Nah, uh, well, no, no. You know what, Clifford? You know why? Because Clifford was just brilliant mm. in the way that he did things, you know, um, and the way that he talked back, and the way that like he just knew what to say. Yeah, it was kind of like he was a little boy, and then like an 18 year old at the same time you know how like you can't say nothing to an 18 year old because apparently they know everything mm -hmm. you know what i mean like that kind of thing like that that's the part of it that was interesting because he clearly is just like a guy in his 30s in this movie and and it's a big joke right but um to answer your question i definitely think that clifford would be worse because clifford is just slick with it you know what i mean the other kids the other kids they're just destructive you know, that's that like, uh, because problem child, he just felt that he wasn't going to be loved in general, mm -hmm. whereas Clifford is malicious about it. Mm -hmm. That That's what I would say is the big difference between the two of them. Mm -hmm. you, oh, you told me a lie. So now I'm going to. <laughs> yeah. Well, he what he de deems as a lie, what he deems as mm -hmm. a lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like and and, you know, the, the whole thing is um, it's quite interesting actually like once you start getting into it and start seeing past like the hilarious parts like him being in love with the girl and him being so crazy but the the one of the things that i i was just really disappointed with was the uncle because you know he really could have just avoided a lot of those things just by being honest mm -hmm. um with, with the lady but you know that's what happens when you try to impress people that that just don't like you anyway and my yeah. and i'm gonna be honest like my, my favorite part was when the kid told him like listen the old man put the lipstick in your pocket that wasn't even me he's old because he hates you he, he doesn't like you you know so it would then not so you know that just revealed the fact that like whether the little boy was around or not um you know he just wasn't gonna get any shine they wasn't feeling him period you know what mm -hmm. i mean a situation like that you just keep it moving but yeah hey, it worked out because he ended up getting the girl so that was cool you know, but but still, like, it's just a lot of um, old D simping, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and he ended up winning. He, you know, he Steve Urkel did. But still, like, if he would have been honest from the beginning about his situation, then I think that a lot of the stuff that happened wouldn't have happened, you know. But then at the same time, this child. Wow. I'm, I'm very curious to see what Chris has to say. You know why? Because I don't have children. I have God children. I have children that I don't necessarily worry about, like, you know, whether they ate today or where they sleep in, things like that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, well, at least not my brother when he was a kid. But other than that, it doesn't count. That doesn't make sense. And not unless I have a child. So I'm curious to see what Chris has to say because I'm curious. I'm, I'm no that this movie must have hit people hard that have to consistently be a disciplinarian and I, i'm curious to see what 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 happens with that you know what i mean because if there's chris one thing smiling. i know about I'm, chris no, is there's one thing you that because i'll tell you one thing one of my favorite things about chris because he's he's raising daughters is that he's constantly telling them make that make sense and i'm not gonna lie as a man i really appreciate that you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, I'm, I'm very curious to see what. I wonder he where he got that from. Make that make sense. <laughs> Yo! Let's see what's the story behind that. There's always something fun. You know, I'm gonna start my little soliloquy. I'm not even gonna start my, you know, intro. I'm gonna start my soliloquy with um, a definition. Small definition. It's the definition of on site, right? It's. Short for kill on site. Kill on site is used in online games, letting others know if you see a particular player, immediately attempt to kill them because of their past actions. Now, you might ask, executive consultant, what past actions are you talking about? Well, a couple of uh, weeks ago, I was sitting in a pool and I called my friend. And I said, Hey, so I texted him. I said, Hey, I need you to pick a movie. He said, What's the movie? I said, Sim movie. He gave me some definitions of Sim. I said, What movie are you picking? He said, Clifford. Okay, I'll give it a chance. How bad could it be? Week and a half later, my question is answered. This was garbage, and I even got a thumbs up or thumbs down. Why do you find this funny? I was upset the minute I saw him dressed as an old priest, right? I was like, okay, give me something. Give me something. 
He's walking and he has this poor makeup and aesthetics on. He's walking and they throw stuff in his head. I'm like, oh my god, it's stupid. And then Wonder Years comes. I, I, I don't, I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> so then he goes to the back and everybody knows. Everybody who knows he's like a consultant. What is the thing he does the most? He travels yeah. with an airplane. So my first scene is I see this little brat right <laughs> doing the stuff I hate so much, hitting a chair. Sitting next to your parents, you're hitting a chair, and the parent, I don't care, I am, and the parents are not saying <laughs> anything to this brat. Why are you hitting my chair? I personally was offended. And then, I don't, oh. no, no, I'm afraid of ice. I hate flying on the plane. I only do it at the same time, right? But then, for some reason, he's letting the cockpit, I don't understand when they started letting that happen, but he's letting the cockpit to talk to the pilot. The pilot says, oh, hey, little guy, let me talk to you. And then, the pilot risked our lives. Actually, no, I blame the, uh, the flight attendant. Risk our lives and the plane goes down. I would have been crapping in my pants. Strike two. Strike two, you cost me money? You're about to cost me money? I'm upset. I can't take this anymore. This little brat, I can't take it anymore. Then I said, let me find another redeemable character to make me understand why I got sentenced to death. I watching this movie. So I see the uncle, right? Shout out to Jace. He's looking for something. But I, and I, and I, I look at the uncle and I say, okay, this might be a guy I can relate to. One bedroom house. I understand why you got that shit. I peeped it. I'm here with you, buddy. Unfortunately, your girl peeped it too. But I'm here with you, buddy. Oh, there's a cliff. <laughs> yes. Watch here. Anyway, right? Anyway. He was so smooth with it. He, he just said it nonchalantly. Like, we have a sofa bed. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I felt like that child was rewarded for too much bad behavior. And as a parent of two, I can't stand it. And the funny thing is, I completely forgot when I was watching this movie about a movie I did love until Vic Richard. I love Problem Child. I thought Problem Child was hilarious. Mm -hmm. But at least that child had reasons to act the way he did to a certain yeah. point. Had reasons to act the way he did. That's true. And at least at the end of all his movies, he started, oh, maybe I'm doing this wrong and apologize. He looked apologetic. This kid was the devil. I don't know if you had me watch Clifford or Damien. I don't know, but I will tell you this the true devil of this movie is one boy meets world. That's all I got. Before I begin, let me just say shout out to Chris for using speech speech to text when he when he when he texted me as this is him holding up. <laughs> he says like, I checked you know, the whole time he's like that. Shout out to Chris for using speech to text. I've never used it myself personally, but he's a busy man. Um I would also like to say Chris asked so many questions. He said, What movie are we picking? What movie are you picking? Why did he pick this movie? Why would James do that? Why I tell you one good reason, because Chris, your anger makes you stronger. <laughs> he succeeded. Right. I was very angry watching this. I'm now, now Vic is trying to remember that movie. That's from Star Wars, Vic. And uh, in that, the people's bad emotions they make them stronger in the dark side of the force. So that's why I did that to Chris because when his anger is fueled, he becomes stronger, more potent. And I like that about him. Okay. And only then can he he kill me and take my place and rule the galaxy. Um, now my name is Boy Meets World. Why? Because shout out to Ben Savage for being in this movie on the low. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot that he was in this movie. Shout out to Topanga, who I had a little crush on later on. I was of age at that time, so it was appropriate. Okay, it's nothing crazy. Shout out to Martin Short, who made me hate, who made me hate him. He embodied this role. He's dressed up. I don't know if you remember Looney Tunes cartoons when Bugs Bunny used to dress up as like the little school kid. Wow. And he would be going skipping through and he's wearing like this boarding school uniform. Oh, that's my how God. he's dressed through most of this movie. And if you look behind me, he has this devilish look in his in his eyes whenever he's up to something of no good. Now, Chris talked about he's on the plane and I'm going to highlight something. Because I did say earlier that this movie is full of idiots, but there are two shining lights in this movie, and here they are right now. Those are his parents. Because the minute they got that idea in his head, we're going to dump this kid and never pick him up again, because we never see him again in this movie. Facts. They did. They went to Hawaii and then Spin City, 
And Clifford never saw his parents again. That's why he grew up in that boy's home and became a priest. Okay, shout out to him. Shout out to uh, 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 his uncle, as Chris says, who bought the one bedroom house next to a cliff. No good schools in sight. He said it so smooth. And he almost got away with it. But somehow those rascally kids got in the way. And that was the one time his fiance to be, you know, the Scooby-Doo one, his one <coughs> fiance to be, who's also an idiot, ladies and gentlemen, actually figured things out. Because the rest of the time, when things are blaring and in her face, much like his eye contact, she doesn't pick up one. And she blames her fiance to be who has gained her trust, whom she loves, but she doesn't believe him. And she also believes Clifford, who, as you can see, and in every scene that he's with, is eyeing her like he's a 14-year-old and not a 10-year-old boy. So what is going on? But she's oblivious to that. And shout out to that scene that I can't mention on a public platform when they were outside the restaurant. Vic is smiling because he knows exactly what I'm talking about. I'm reminded of All in the Family. <laughs> you know the lyrics, <laughs> if you yeah. know the lyrics then you'll know where I'm going. <laughs> and I won't sing the lyrics because I don't want this to get to, uh, taken off, okay? But shout out to them. But Martin Short did play this role to a T, and he makes you hate him in every scene that he's in. And I wouldn't say that he's a genius. I would just say that he's surrounded by dumber people. And that brings me to another movie that I want to get into, but I love that one even more than this one. It's called Idiocracy. And boy, can I relate in life, even now. Anyway. Aside from that, I did actually enjoy this movie, and I thought that they did it well because you hated them, and he was stupid, he was precocious, and everything that they promised in this movie, they actually delivered upon. So how can you hate it? You were supposed to be hated, Chris. He did his job. Give the man an Oscar. Final review on uh, next Tuesday and Thursday. Stay with us. Final thoughts coming. And more importantly than that, I also have to get this out the way because uh, I'm just flabbergasted, upset, appalled, disrespected. Uh, stay with us. <laughs> You're watching Obama. <laughs> it's stupid. They fought very hard in the games, Miss Everton. But they were games. Would you like to be in a real war? Imagine thousands of your people dead, your loved ones gone. What do I need to do? This is the 75th year of the Hunger Games. The tributes are to be reaped from the existing pool of victors. I get to say goodbye. So what do we do? I don't think these games are going to be different. Did you ever hear this guy they call the date doctor? Urban myth. Really? Absolutely. I was told you were the guy that helps guys like me. Nobody's perfect. That's pathetic. Pathetic. But one man. My name is Alex Hitchens. Call me Hitch. Can help you come close. Let me give you my number. Do you have a pen? Yes, I do. Hitch, the cure for the common man. Eight out of ten women believe that the first kiss will tell them everything that they need to know. The secret is to go 90% of the way and hold. Now show me the magic. Show me the magic. What the hell was that? I showed you the magic. I, no, I said come 90 and then I come 10. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hitch coming up next I Thursday, 8.30 p.m. And next Tuesday, continue the Hunger Games uh Franchise with Hunger Games catching fire, the second one. But today we're talking about Clifford, and I, you know what? I, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be the one that goes first this time. I'm going to do that. All right. Excuse me one second. Uh, but anyway, so obviously I'm not a fan of this movie. Obviously I can't stand this movie. Obviously this movie made me sick to my stomach. I don't understand why I was picked, except for somebody had something against me and they had it for decades. I and mean, I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. But everybody knows a few things about me. Everybody knows that I base a movie on one movie alone. 
<laughs> and did I enjoy this movie better than the Batman? Uh, I did. It gets a thumbs down for me. Yeah, That's how bad this movie was. It gets a thumbs down to Batman. Oh, was- man. This guy. <laughs> yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's episode is brought to you by Disrespect. <laughs> Longtime sponsor of the executive consultant. <laughs> oh, man. Vic, please, you know, please redeem this show. You know what's funny? I'm surprised you didn't like that Al Bundy spot in the beginning of the movie. No, when, the, the, when, the, when the father, yeah, you know what I'm talking about because you know that shit was funny. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Oh, man. But look, I'll tell you what I liked the overall story behind this and my and the thing i didn't understand was why he was a priest and like why they started him being a priest and why he was telling the story i really appreciated how it was like listen if you stay if you stay so big headed and focused on whatever you want you're gonna end up alone mm-hmm. um and that's pretty much like the the main the, the main thing like if you just look at life as like you're the only person on this planet and what you want is the only thing that matters then um you're gonna end up alone and then the other thing that i appreciated about this is the very very end when he's still talking to the dinosaur because that that really reveals how like adults are nothing but big children Mm -hmm. so um you know and that and that part of it i thought i thought was brilliant um after just seeing so much mischief and so much crazy and so much like ridiculousness with with this because i'm sure that there's a lot of parents that clearly can relate to um just kids trying to figure out ways to get whatever it is that they want and doing the most um and this kid really did the most um and that's why it was entertaining i mean i clearly give it a thumbs up um i definitely would you know just put it on in the background because this kid is wildness right now and then the other thing is that it was also a little nostalgic because like it just has the 90s cheese feel you know like it just Mm -hmm. has that the 90s feel to it you know so like it's it's 90s funny like like ace ventura type of thing like you know it's good it's good shit so yeah but yeah, everybody knew I was gonna give it a thumbs up. So, <laughs> you stupid! I yeah, you funny. <laughs> All right, close it out, man. Close it out. Bro. No, wait a minute. Is that a thumbs up? Thumbs down? No, it's a thumbs up. We did put the thumbs up. So so far, we got two thumbs up. Let me give my uh, review. Listen, the theme is about simps, people you hate, do stupid stuff. I gave you an entire movie of people who do dumb stuff, people that you hate. Chris adamantly hated. That's why I gave it a thumbs up, right? They were stupid. This is why this movie should win for this month's theme, two in a row. I'm just saying. I'm biased, but whatever, okay? Now, did Martin Short play one hell of a character? Yes. Did he keep that character throughout the whole movie? Yes. Is this movie a thumbs up? Yes. Here's some no's, okay? And to tee up, I just want to do this. Chris, uh, he's talking about speech to text. He uh, texted me the other day. He goes, hey, James, are you in on Hunger Games? And I said, no. If he asks me, hey, can you do another review for an MCU movie? No. What about a Star Wars movie under Kathleen Kennedy? No. Hey, Chris, are you ever going to do Singing in the Rain? No. So as far as this movie, though, it is a thumbs up. It wins. You know it should win the theme. I'm just saying. Mike Knox, where are you at? Why are you scared? All right. No. (laughs) Well, that's my answer if you ever ask me if I want to watch this movie again. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this uh, episode of Unpopular Review Clifford. Join us on Tuesday for none other than The Hungry Games and Thursday for Hitch, as well as the Secret Invasion episodes on Wednesday. 
So for Big Four Boy Meets World, I mean Texas Soto. We'll see you right here next time on Unpopular Review. Good night, everybody. Yeah, that's silly. I, I just never going to get this thing you had me watch.